Okay, so for anyone just joining us on the recording, we're going to get started in our rotation of the Sun Lab in just a moment. But Samantha just asked an interesting question about the new grading system. And I wanted to address this to the entire class. So thank you very much, Samantha, for reminding me. Apparently, I got an announcement that we CCRI is switching officially to a pass fail system for the rest of the semester. So you either pass the class or you fail it, in which case everyone who's been turning in their work is on the fast track to pass the class, of course. Um, however, if you want to get a letter grade, you have to, I don't know, ask me for it or ask the school for it. So you have to indicate that you want to get a letter grade. Um, I'm happy, I'm gonna keep a letter grade for you guys anyways, and I will enter pass fail. But if you tell me that you want the letter, I think you have to indicate to the college that you want the letter, and then I'll be able to choose it from the drop-down menu when I put in the final grades. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So, um, so normally I could see a strong motivation to doing pass fail, but all the people I'm talking to now are people that submit their work every week. So you're not gonna fail if you're doing all your week, uh, all your work. It, it's up to you guys, whatever you want, you know? What do you think, Samantha? I guess my concern is that the pass fail doesn't count towards your GPA. So if you were to give us, like if we were to request a real letter, do you know if that would count towards our That GPA would count towards no? your GPA, yeah. Okay. It, it is if you ask for a letter grade, it can affect your GPA. That's a good point, because if you're getting okay. an A in this class or a B in this class, that might help your GPA, right? Right, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh. If you guys want, I'm on team student here, so. You can even ask me what your final grade is, and I'll tell you. And that I don't know if you can decide that late in the game, but I'd be game for it. You, you can decide by April 30th, I think, is when you need to send in the... Oh, did you guys see your midterm grade? Keep in mind, as long as you keep doing your lab and your homeworks, your midterm grade should be pretty predictable, a, a pretty good predictor of your final grade, because you've already doubled your exam grade for the final, right? So you should be able to calculate it quite easy. Just don't miss any homeworks and labs, and it should be a cinch. I did find uh, both Protractor and Compass, by the way, Mr. No Brown. way, you are awesome. And they're space green, I love it. And it, it also has the, uh, like, I can put the Compass in the middle of it if I need to do an angle for us. But All right, cool. Let me put away these and Compass and let's get started. <laughs> Everything must be neon. Okay. So to do this, I did this the other day and it was, it was really effective. It was a short, quick and fun lab. For the most part, I'm gonna be your, your hands, okay? Uh, should I recreate the page with the circles? You might have a hard time recreating the page with a sunspot, Matthew, unless you're extremely careful. Oh my gosh, there's one other thing we need for this. How, I forget this every time, tracing paper. Just a moment, class. Oh, bloody hell. I found one piece of tracing paper last time that I did this with, and my, my son is already on here, but I'm gonna actually erase it so I can do it again with you guys. So just hold on a second. Uh... Just a moment, class. Let me erase this up. <clears throat> I'm guessing you guys probably don't have tracing paper there. I had to really scrape around for one at my place. That's something we could have gotten at CBS. I forgot about that. Um, okay, guys. I can't find the, uh, the lab document. Sorry? I can't find the, uh, the documents for the lab today. Okay. Do you want some help with that, Thomas? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind. Not at all. 
Are you in Blackboard right now? Yes. Okay, so share screen. Uh, if in Blackboard, go to your sidebar here. Do you see mm -hmm. the sidebar? Yep. Click the tab that says lab. And then you can see rotation of the sun and click the second sunspots lab, the one that's oh, four there, megabytes. There, see, I was opening up the lab and trying to find it in it. I didn't know it was like posted up. Like right it's in both, but it's easy to see right here. So just click that. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah, yeah, that helps. All right, cool. So uh, you guys can see my table here, and I'm gonna pull out these chairs, and uh, let me get my pencil, and I'll explain what we're gonna do here. Just bear with me, guys. I'm going kind of slow here today. A ruler is extremely helpful here. Oh, and I'm gonna need some light. Okay, I got my workstation all ready to go. Now, in today's lab class, let me stop the share for a second. <clears throat> in today's lab, we are going to attempt to measure the rotation of the sun by tracking a number of sunspots as they rotate across the disk of the sun, as seen in this image here. Now, I'm going to tell us exactly which sunspots that we're going to want to track. And, um, and then we're going to calculate something called the sun's angular velocity. And we'll be able to compute the rotation period of the sun. Let's try to go to my Wax paper will work as tracing paper. You're a genius, Chrissy. I love it, that's right. If you have wax paper, you can follow along with this. Uh, and of course, the more you follow along, the more exciting this, this whole exercise will be. So let's go to my uh, share screen. You guys should be able to see me up in the corner of your, uh, of your Zoom meeting here. And I'll be using my phone so that you guys can take measurements with me. Let me go to share screen, iPhone, share. Okay. Uh, before I go any farther, I should probably take off the, I should go into my settings and I should uh, take off the auto lock screen here. Display and brightness, auto lock, never. Okay, that way, uh, that way it won't pop off. Okay, can you guys see our paper okay here? You guys see what I'm doing? Thumbs up, that's what I need to see, okay. Um, we're gonna track a very specific set of sunspots. Rather than just track one or every sunspot, we're going to focus on two sunspots. One sunspot called the A spot, we will track as it rotates across the northern hemisphere of the sun. Another spot that we'll call the B spot, we'll track as it rotates across the southern hemisphere. We'll calculate the angular rate of rotation, and then that'll help us calculate the rotation of the sun. Now, I've discovered through long experience that this goes much better if we all choose the same spots. And I'm gonna show you which spots to choose. We're gonna actually skip the first day here. And we're gonna to go to the second day, 7-30. Uh, and we're gonna focus on, uh, sorry, 7-27. And we're gonna focus on this spot right here, which shows up on the eastern edge of the sun. And it's gonna begin rotating across the surface. You'll notice that that spot has now become this spot in the next day on 7.30. On 8-1, it's now moved into the center. And this is just going to help you guys figure out which spots I'm tracking here. Right. Uh, on 8-3, it's moved over here. And on 8-6, it's moved over there. <clears throat> Okay, so let's just go over that again. The first one, no spots. The 727 date, we're going to choose this spot. 
which goes to this spot, which goes to this spot on 8-1, this spot 8-3, and that spot on 8-6. Now we'll come here to 8-8. We want to track, oh sorry, that spot was in the southern hemisphere. We want to now track one in the northern hemisphere. So, oops. Sorry, I'm losing focus here. On 8-8, I'm going to pick the spot that appears right here on the eastern limb. And that should become the darkest spot that we see here. On 8-12, it's towards the center. 8-14, uh, it's a little right of center. 8-16, it's here. And on 8-18, it's here. Okay, now let's just go over that again. Top spot there, there, 812, 814, 816, and 818. Okay, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to make a model of the sun. You can see my old one here. It's kind of lame. I had to reuse my tracing paper. And we're gonna make a model of the sun in this tracing paper by first measuring the vertical diameter of the sun in the first, in the first frame here. So I'm gonna line this up vertically, and you guys are gonna tell me what you think your, your best estimate of that, the measurement of the sun's diameter is. What would you say? 5.4. Centimeters, right? Correct. Okay, now that's the sun's diameter. So what would half of that be? Uh, 2.7? Uh, what, no? 2.9? Wait. It was 2.7. No, 2.7. You're right. <laughs> Sorry. I, I had a little bit of insomnia last night, so I'm not firing on all cylinders here. Good job, Samantha. Thank you very much. Okay. Now. Oh, that wasn't me. I got the wrong answer. Oh, I can't take okay. credit for that. Well, whoever did get the right answer, you'll be remembered forever in the halls of Valhalla. Now, <laughs> I'm going to use this, this compass here. This compass is a tool that's going to let me make a circle whose radius is 2.7 centimeters. So the first thing I'd like to do is uh, find a place like on the back of this page, on a blank page. And I'm going to make a set of tick marks that are exactly 2.7 centimeters apart. Let me get the better ruler. This ruler's kind of crummy here. Okay, so if you can see my ruler, I'm gonna clamp it down hard and I'm gonna make a sort of vertical tick mark at zero centimeters. And then I'm gonna go to 2.7 and I'm gonna make a tick mark there, okay? A tick mark at zero and 2.7. So, so now these two tick marks are 2.7 centimeters apart. And I'm going to set my compass to this using my set screw here. Okay. So I'm just trying to get the shadow off this thing. My set screw will allow me to set the radius of this compass. Oops. Sorry, I lost screen for a second. There we go. Okay. So I put one tick mark there, and I use the little thumb screw, and I'm going to open it up until it's exactly 2.7. I'm even going to kind of test it out with a little stroke here and make sure my stroke, yeah, comes out just there, 2.7. Okay, now, now I can make a circle on this tracing paper. I'll try to make it on the other side here. Uh, it's too bad that... Um, that I'm using a used tracing paper, but that's the nature of the beast, I guess. I'm going to lean and spin and make a perfect circle. Okay. And now I'm going to test, and I'm going to make sure that the circle actually lines up with the first sun that I see in my image. That will confer I didn't make any major blunders in my drawing. <clears throat> So uh, I line this up over the uh, tracing paper, and sure enough, the circle matches perfectly. I did an excellent job at measurement. I'm very proud of myself here. Okay. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to record some tick marks. 
because it's very easy to rotate the paper as we're tracking sunspots. So I'm going to trace over these four registration tick marks, north, south, east, and west. And I'm going to trace them nicely, and I'm going to trace them neatly. Can I ask a question? Yes. How are we doing this if we don't have tracing paper? Is there a different way, or are we just going to estimate when we draw on the other page? I guess what you're going to do is you're just going to watch me, OK? okay. And uh, yeah, that's kind of lame. But when it comes time for us to transfer the, the spots onto the main page, then you're going to kind of freehand it. OK, all right, cool. Thank now, you. A couple of techniques students did in my other class when they did this is some of them had me hold my phone up and they took a digital picture of it on their screen and then they kind of submitted that or they traced over that with white paper. Both of those are options, right? Sound like a plan? Got it. Um, so I'm labeling this north and I guess I'll label this guy east over here. And now I'm gonna to attempt to track my spots. So let's go over to my first day, which is 7-27. See if I can get the iPhone angle a little bit better. <clears throat> and my spot is in the lower right corner. So the first thing I do is I kind of line up my registration tick marks first and foremost. And then I'm going to make a spot there, for my sunspot. And I'm gonna keep the date as a, as a day slash, a month slash day at the bottom. So I'm going to write underneath in very fine print 727. And then I'm going to move on to my, my second day here. Line up my registration tick marks. And I'm going to track my second spot. And that's on 730. Okay. And now we'll go over to my third spot on 8-1, and I'll track the spot here, putting the date underneath it, 8-1. Everyone seeing what I'm doing there? Okay, move on to my next day, which is 8-3. Line up my registration tick marks, Track the spot, 8-3, and now we'll go to 8-6 and we'll track that spot. <clears throat> now that spot is the lower hemisphere. I'm going to mark that as my B spot. And now I'm going to go on to the upper hemisphere so I can get my A spot. Uh, there's a couple of different reasons why we want to choose multiple spots. Obviously, by choosing more spots, you get a better estimate of the rotation of the sun. But because we're choosing one spot in the sort of northern hemisphere and one spot in the southern hemisphere, we're hoping to get the rotation period averaged so that it comes out along the diameter or the uh, equator of the sun, right? Because the, the average of this rotation speed and that rotation speed will hopefully be the rotation of the equator. Do you guys remember from today's lecture what the rotation of the sun's equator was? Any close payer attentioners? Was it like 20 or 30 days? Uh, it was 25 days on the equator. That's what we're hoping to get here. We'll see how it turns out. <clears throat> okay, so let's get our A spot now here. So we'll go to, um, sorry. We'll go to 8-8. Line up our registration tick marks, and we'll track our first date here, and that's 8-8. And okay. uh, we'll go to our second spot, which is, excuse me, uh, 8-10. Okay. Our third spot is 812. Line up our registration tick marks. Track the spot, 8-12. We are our next spot here, which is 814. Carefully line up our registration tick marks. 
eight and 14. Here's eight and 16. Keep this one real good. Eight sixteen, and then our final spot on eight eighteen. Okay. So now, what we should see on our tracing paper is something that looks like this. In the northern hemisphere, we have an A spot. And in the southern hemisphere, we have a B spot. Now, naively, you might think, hey, bro, can I just watch the sunspot rotate around the sun, and then I know the rotation of the sun, bing, bang, boom, done? Uh, the answer is no, for a couple of different reasons. One, when the sunspot rotates to the western hemisphere, it disappears. And once it's gone, there's all these other spots that are coming around on the other side. How are you going to know which spot was your original spot? You could very easily lose track of it. And the other reason is that the sunspots sometimes change their latitude and sometimes even change their shape and morph a bit from day to day. So it's not as simple as just watching them rotate. What we're going to do is build a model of the sun where we project them up to the surface. First thing I need to do is I need to kind of draw the, draw the diameter or a cross section of the sun where the sunspots were located. And that means I'm going to want to make a best fit line for my A spot and my B spot that kind of cut through the middle of the sunspot's positions. And I'm going to make my best fit line so that there are equal numbers above and below my spot. There we go. So there's my best fit line for the A spot. And here's my best fit line for the B spot. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the length of these lines and I'm gonna transfer these lines over to the next page where it says spot A. So you guys should definitely be following along with this, this job now and, and try to freehand it if you, if you don't have a ruler. Or at least use a straight edge, you know, find something that has a straight edge, even your calculator has a straight edge to it. All right, let's try to take a measurement of the length of the A spot line together. What would you guys say the length of that A spot line is? Five point three centimeters. It's somewhere between 5.3 and 5.4. Uh, so we could go either way, Chrissy. I'm going to choose 5.4 because I know it'll help the math go a little smoother. Although 5.3 would have been a very respectable answer. I'm going to choose 5.4. <clears throat> um, although I really should just go along with 5.3. I don't know. Let's do 5.4 and see what happens. You know what? I got a better idea. Chrissy. Let's go with your measurement. Let's see what happens if we do 5.3. You ain't wrong. You ain't wrong at all. It's, it's not good science to be a numerologist. You shouldn't favor one number over another. All numbers are equal in the eyes of the Lord, okay? So let's choose 5.3 as our measurement, and we're going to make a line exactly, exactly the same length just to the right of sunspot A. So if you're following along, put this directly to the right of where it says spot A. I'm going to make a line 5.3 centimeters long. Okay. Now, uh, what, what's, what do you get if you divide 5.3 in half? You get um, 2.5, 2.65, is that right? Two point six five. So I'm going to make a vertical cross right at two point six five. Sorry, this is taking some dexterity here. Oops. 
I'm going to make sure that that, that looks like a, a vertical cross. I don't want to confuse that with the sunspot later. Okay, did I do that right? Yeah, it doesn't look like it's in the middle, but it is. All right, let's do the same for the B spot. <clears throat> Uh, Chrissy, what, what would you say the length of the B spot is? Or anyone? Let's make this a collab, kids. 5.1 or 5.2, roughly. We'll do 5.1. Okay. So now directly to the right of the B spot, and I'm putting them directly to the right of the B spot for a reason, we'll make a line that is 5.1 centimeters long. And the midpoint of 5.1 is 2.55. All right. Now, what I'm about to do is to make a top-down projection. Imagine taking the sun and imagine taking a big cutting knife and slicing the sun through this latitude. We're going to make a top-down bird's-eye view of the sun, and we're going to try to project these sunspots onto the surface to watch them rotate in a circle. So I've got my line drawn here, and I'm going to take my compass <coughs> and carefully set it so that the radius matches up with the sun. What? When I was only getting my Wonder Woman stuff from Jonas, Jonas <laughs> started to be mean to me. When you were getting your what? My Wonder Woman. All right, here we go. We're going to draw in a semicircle right here. Just a half of a circle. Chris, are you able to follow with me? Don't fucking play with it. Oh, somebody's not muted. <laughs> <laughs> I have kids. I get it. <laughs> You guys see what I did there? Hey, Chris, are you having any luck since you had the protractor and compass? Are you having any luck doing this stuff? Or am I uh, a little bit. It's The c protractor part of it doesn't lock in when Wait, I'm trying to use the compass with the protractor. So far, right? just the yeah, no, I'm just trying to make sure it lines up correctly because <laughs> I don't have a lock on my uh, protract, uh, compass oh, yeah, at all. Compass. I know, I hate those. Some of those cheapy ones, I have a couple too in my office. I quickly discovered that well, even if they don't have a lock, a heavy duty one, like this guy has some, some mass to it, some heft, and that, keep, that helps keep it from rotating a bit. Okay. Um, I just went to the window and traced it. Oh, that's so, awesome. I don't have yeah, a compass or a protractor. Yeah, you can, you can use white paper and you can still trace through it. Good job, Chrissy. I'll be curious to see what kind of stuff you guys send me. Okay, now we're gonna go to our B line and we're gonna do the same thing, okay? Uh, we'll put the center here. I'm going to adjust the radius just a little bit. And I'll draw in my semicircle. So these are top down bird's eye views of the sun that we're going to trace our, our spots onto. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to get the spots directly onto their same positions on the line. And I suppose we could measure them, but that's fraught with um, potential mishaps. A sort of cleaner and quicker way to do it is to take a sh sharp pointy object like a pin or the point of your compass and to poke through wherever you see a spot to make a little divot on the, uh, on the page below. So I'm gonna take my, my point pointy in here and I'm gonna go dink, make a little hole, dink, 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 okay? And now when I remove the paper, I can see those little divot holes and I can kind of color them in. Try to force the spots to be on the line. There's a, there's a spot. There's a spot. There's a spot. And there's a spot. And I'm also going to transfer the dates 
that I see here. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So this is 8, 8. 8, 12. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake. That's 8, 10. Eight twelve, eight fourteen, eight sixteen, and eight eighteen. <clears throat> Y'all see that? I'm going to do the same thing here with the lower one with the B spot. Put the B spot one underneath. I'm going to poke through, making my little divots here. Dink, dink. Dink, dink, dink. I'm going to call them in and label the dates. So this first one is 727. Then there's this guy. 730. There's a spot right at the middle here, an 8-1. Then there's 8-3. And then there's 8-6. All right. So far, so good. This is kind of where I'm at so far. Try to freehand it the best of your ability, guys. I know this ain't easy. Let me look at more of your faces to see what's going on there. Samantha's giving me the eyebrows. <laughs> I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> Angel, you're in shadows, but I hope I hope you guys are trying to at least play along as best you can. Laura, it looks like you're doing stuff. The pencil in the mouth is a good look. That means I'm I'm really I'm really focused on this here. I'm I'm hard at work. Okay, <clears throat> what we need to do is we need to track two of these spots up to the surface. Okay, so we need to take like. Well, we want them to be on either side of the center so we can make a good angle. If they're too close to the edge, it might create some uncertainty in where the spot lands on the surface. I think for me, the ideal spots to choose would be like 810 and 816 because they're on sort of opposite sides of the center there. And watch what I do with my ruler. I'm going to track these spots up to the surface. I'm going to make a vertical line. I'm going to make sure it's vertical by kind of lining up one of my inch, my uh, centimeter marks here. And I'm gonna make sure I track this thing up to the surface, but no farther. So that's our first spot being tracked up to the surface. And then 816, track that up to the surface. Oops, sorry, you guys lost me. <clears throat> oh my God, I, I'm recording this, right? Does it say yeah, recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been recording, recording okay. for a while. I just had a moment of paranoia there. Sorry. I have a quick question. Um, on my tracing paper, I have. Oh wait, never mind. I solved it. Sorry. Okay. Do you want to show me what you got, and I can take a look at it? No, no, no. I was thinking that I had spot A. Was the numbers for B, but I was just flipped around. Yeah, you know what happened there is we chose the first spot. The first spots, the earlier dates were in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. And just from long convention, I always choose the B spot to be in the Southern Hemisphere. And I choose the A spot to be in the Northern Hemisphere. But okay. probably what happened there, Laura, is you're like, wait a minute, the first spot should be A and the second spot should be B. Right, yeah, I was just mixing them up. But We could have done that too, but I like having the Northern Hemisphere be A and the Southern Hemisphere be B. That's just a personal preference, okay? Okay. All right. But it's, it's good that we talk about it so we don't get that confused. Okay, now I want you to watch what I'm going to do. I can see the spots projected up onto the surface or the belly of the sun at two different days. And my goal is to try to figure out how many degrees does a sunspot rotate around the sun per day. So I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to create a big angle here. I'm going to go from the center of the sun here and I'm going to intersect with the sunspot at the surface of the sun, and I'm going to project the line way the hell out, as far as it can go. So there's one, and, and don't, don't hold back here. Really extend this line out as far as you can go, 
because we're going to want to measure these angles and our protractor is going to need the wiggle room. Let's do that down here for the B spot. <clears throat> it looks to me like equally good spots for us to choose would be like 7.30 and 8.3. Those seem to be kind of our ideal go-to spots there. So I'm going to take 7.30. I'm going to track it up to the surface. There. And, there. and I'm also going to make an angle between the center and the intersection with the surface for this guy as well. So here we go. Let's extend this line way the heck out. There's one. There's two right there. Okay. Now we can see the spot rotating throughout the surface of the sun. Okay, it's time to bust out the uh, protractor. The protractor allows us to measure an angle. And I don't know, Chris, if your protractor or anyone else's protractor is like this, but a lot of them have this little hole here in the center. Whatever, they might have a hole or a line, but you've got to put this hole over the vertex of the angle. I want to hold this with the tape here. Now watch me do this. I'm going to put this over the hole. I'm going to put my pencil through it. And then I'm going to pin it and I'm going to spin it. And I'm going to rotate until zero degrees lines up perfectly with one of my arms. Then I'm going to clamp it down and I'm going to read my angle. What would you guys say the angle is there? 73 degrees. Okay, we'll go with that. Oh, I had actually rotated myself a little bit. Hey, uh, Samantha, let's go with 72, okay? Because okay. I had rotated off of the line back there. I'm all now, about it. Now, lined up with the line, you'll notice it's a little bit closer to 72, right? Got it. All right, my clamp didn't work. So I'm going to write this temporarily uh, right here. So 72 degrees. Put that inside the uh, the elbow or the vertex of the angle. Let's do that with the next one as well. Let's pin it and spin it. So pin it with my pencil, and I'll spin and rotate until that line lines up there. This time I'll try to clamp it down a little more carefully. What's our angle, guys? 56. 56 degrees. Very good. 56 degrees. Nice. Okay. Now, the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out the time interval between the two spots. So let's start with this one here. 810 to 816. How many days was that? Six. All right. So up here for a time interval, we're just going to write down six days. How about down here? Uh-oh. Jumping Jesus, we, we changed months here. We went from 7-30 to 8-3. How many days are between, um, what is that? June, July? July, August? Yeah, July, August. Five days. All right, let's be careful here. How many days are in July? 31. All right. So we have 30 to 31. That's one day. 31 to 1, that's two days. 1 to 2 is three days. And 2 to 3 is four days. You see that? Yes. So we revise our answer, correct? Correct. All right, but that was a tricky one. Four days. Now we've got to calculate something called the angular velocity. The angular velocity, sometimes represented as a theta with a dot over it, tells you the number of degrees per day that a sunspot rotates. Based on the units of degrees per day, what do you think is the best way for us to calculate the angular velocity of a sunspot here? The units kind of tell you what the formula should be. 
you put the degrees over the number of days. So the first one would be 72 degrees over six days. Sounds good. Let's do that. So 72 divided by six. Let's keep three sig figs here. So it's 12.0 degrees per day. We all got that? Let's do the next one now. It's 56 divided by four. Oh, wow. 14.0 degrees per day. That's kind of cute. That makes our average pretty easy. We have to calculate the average of those two. What do we get? I was thinking no calculators required, guys. 13. 13.0 13 degrees per day. Okay. So, oh, by the way, don't forget to put your name at the top. Don't forget to put AS 1010 or whatever your section is, you know? Okay. Oops. Uh, oh, I need that third page now. So hold on. I heard my printer spit it out. Oh, shucks. What did I do with that third page? I, I heard my printer print it. Hold on a second, guys. You try printing it again. Print. Oh no, not all of them. Custom, page six only. Oh, my printer is in an error state. That's lovely. Oh no, now it's shutting down. Okay, hold on. I actually have a second printer I can choose here. Let's choose this one. Pages custom, page six. Let's hit print and see what happens here. Oh, shucks. Okay, guys, stand by. I had a little printer thing go on here. Oh, I need some paper. No. Okay. Yes. I had one piece of paper left in the printer, so it worked. <laughs> All right, now I've got my last page, which is 13-6 here. Sorry about that, guys. Always a couple of things I forget to do every, every damn lab. <laughs> Are we back here? Can you see my phone? Uh, we're permanently effed here. Stop share. Share screen. I'm honestly really confused, says Diana. Diana, I can only unconfuse you if you talk to me. I'm just kind of looking at your uh, your comments here. Diana, if you're confused, I can't, I can't really help unless you guys talk to me. It's like a dialogue. I just assume that what I'm doing makes sense on my end and that it's going to make sense to you guys. Okay, I've been trying to explain it along the way as we go here. Let's get back to the action. Okay. 
<clears throat> Let's review what we've done, because some people are saying they're confused. I don't know. We tracked some spots as they went around the sun. Then we made a model of the sun. We tracked the spots, and we made a best fit line. And then we measured both of these lines and we transferred them to spot A and spot B. We measured those best fit lines and put a line of exactly the same length here, transferred our spots to the same position. This is now a top down view of the sun, a slice of the sun. And we're tracking the sun spots up to the surface of the sun so we can see how many degrees they are rotating through per day. In the first case, we got 12 degrees per day. In the second case, we got 14 degrees per day. Now we're going to go to the third page where we, we're going to forget about spot C because, well, we're just doing a cheesy version because it's already enough work doing this as it is. So forget about spot C. We're just going to record our average angular velocity right here. And you guys said to me that the average of 12 and 14 is 13.0 degrees per day. Now, allow me to go through a little argument with you here. Let's imagine looking at our sun from the top down. OK? We've been tracking the rotation of a sunspot along the surface. And we found that the sunspot goes an average of about 13 degrees per day. Let's get my protractor and let's make a model of that really quick. So, I don't know. Let's start by putting a spot here. Make a line. I'm just kind of doing this for my own sanity. And I want to measure 13 degrees from here. So, uh, oh geez, I didn't give myself enough headroom, did I? If that's 13 degrees, I'm going to make a line like so. 13 degrees is a pretty small fraction of 360. So that's how many degrees my sunspot rotates in one day. It rotates 13 degrees per day. In order to calculate the rotation of the sun, I need to figure out how many days it takes the sunspot to go around the entire circle, which is how many degrees? 360. OK. So let's make a following corresponding ratio. That 13 degrees is to one day, and if it keeps the same rotation rate, it'll be the same rate as 360 degrees to period days, where P is the synodic, not the sidereal period. Now, I'll explain the synodic versus the sidereal period later, but just bear with me here. First, let's solve for the synodic period using algebra. 13 degrees per day is the average angular velocity. So I'll flip the synodic period up and the angular velocity down, and I get that the synodic period is 360 degrees divided by my average angular velocity. That is 360 degrees divided by 13.0 degrees per day. Let's divide that up. Sixty divided by thirteen. Twenty-seven point seven. What are my units, students? Days. Very good. Now we're going to record this under synodic rotation period. Twenty-seven point seven days. Does anyone out there in the studio audience remember the difference between synodic and sidereal period from our lectures? That was earlier in the semester where we learned the difference between these two. Does anyone know what sidereal means? 
Isn't sidereal when it matches up, lines up with the sun again based on the equator? Uh, no, synodic is when they line up again, and sidereal is with respect to stars. Let me show you with my iPhone what's going on. Let's pretend that this is the sun right here, and we were tracking some sunspots, okay? We want to know the true rotation period of the sun. Oh, sorry, I lost my phone here. We want to know the true rotation period of the sun with respect to the background stars. That is, how long would it take a sunspot to go all the way around the sun and come back again? But the problem is our camera here represents the Earth. And we were tracking them over the course of several days while the Earth was rotating with the sunspot. That means we weren't a fixed observer relative to the background stars just watching the sun spin. We were actually moving along with the spot between observations. So we have to subtract out Earth's rotation. Because of Earth's rotation, the period that we wrote, 27.7, is the time for the spot to come back around relative to a moving Earth. Now the formula is similar to the formula that we learned about for planets when we did the sidereal versus synodic period calculations. And you can calculate the sidereal period of an inner planet. In this case, the sunspot is kind of like an inner planet using the following formula. 365.25 days times the synodic period over 365.25 days plus the synodic period in parentheses. So for our group, that means 365.25 days times 27.7 days all divided by 365.25 days plus 27.7 days. Let's go ahead and plug and chug that. <clears throat> okay. So I have 365.25 times 27.7 divided by open parentheses 365.25 plus 27.7. Close parentheses and then equals. Final answer, we'll round it back to two sig figs. 26 figs. Which is close. It's the value quoted in the book. We actually got 25.7, but I decided to be conservative and assume I only had two sig figs worth of goodness. Okay. So what can I do for you guys now? Do you want to take a look at some of those figures again? Yeah, if we can go back to spots A and B. Sure. Um, I just wasn't able to keep up setting everything up. Was I moving a little too quick, Parker? Uh, a teensy bit, but that's why it's recorded, and I can go back, worst case scenario. Yeah, uh, I think too than... quick was probably less yeah. painful than too slow. It's hard to know how to pace it, Parker, so. Yeah. Anyways, um, I don't mind hanging out for a second and helping you guys get the... Uh, Whatever you need. Yeah, I think I can just take a screenshot of what you have now, then that kind of people can other can do what they want. I just need to copy the diagrams is all. I was yeah. I wasn't exactly sure what you were doing, so yeah. I can zoom in on some. When we submit it, are we just doing the two pages that we wrote on? We don't have to like yeah. Just the two pages that you wrote in. If you want to submit, if you if you did do this, I'd love to see what you did. So normally when we're in lab together, I have you submit this page, 13.5, this page, uh, 13.6, and I normally have the students staple their tracing paper to the top. So if you manage to do this part, uh, 
affix that to it too, okay? Okay. Parker, direct me. How can I show you more stuff here? What? Oh, uh, and, and then just what you have on uh, the last page. Oh, let me get the lighting better here. Okay, I got screenshots. I'm all set. All right, do you want a screenshot of this guy too? Um, Just do it. Okay, I actually already have that. Thank you, though. Oh, okay. Cool. All right, so let me exit out of this mode here. Yeah. So that was our lab. Rotation of the sun. Everyone feeling good about that? Let's go back good. to gallery mode for a second. Well, that was nice. Uh, cranking out a little lab together. How do we do on time, by the way? I, I was sort of engrossed, so I didn't notice. Oh, 201. It's about perfect, right? We're getting better at this every day. Cheers. Yes, Matthew. Perfect on time for once. I ain't going to screw that up again, I hope. <laughs> um, uh, please make sure to submit. Keep up with your submissions. And I'm talking to all you all watching the YouTubes later at home. Please keep up with your submissions and submit it in normal formats that I can see. Uh, does anyone have questions or comments or things they want to talk about? I have a question. Um, I know we'd had some trouble with my submitting last week's homework. Were you able to receive that? Um, I, I recorded you by email, but the problem is, Kayla, and this is important for other people too. Matthew, I'll address your question in a second. Uh, Kayla, I'm now juggling with two grade books. Normally I keep all of your grades in an Excel file, right? But now I'm also having you submit assignments through Blackboard yeah. for CCRI oh, yeah. administrative policy. But Blackboard's a hideously clunky system to use. If you do something kooky, like Chris, maybe what you did is I think somebody submitted, Chris, I remember what you did now. You submitted your homework in the wrong lab folder. You submitted it to lab six inverse square law or lab five inverse square law, but you needed to submit it to the proper lab, like lab seven. So if you guys do anything weird or goofy like that, if you submit a file I can't see, or if you submit your lab to the homework section, I can't keep up with your grades that way. So what I mean to say, Kayla, is I got your, your emailed versions of the homework and I recorded you as having turned in the assignments in my Excel spreadsheet, but there was no good way to record you as having done the assignment in Blackboard because I can't grade you unless I get a submission. Now, is that the end of the world? I don't know, because I'm not used to using Blackboard, you know? Uh, but it would be nice to have your grades recorded in both places. Someone's a god, according to Matthew. Uh, Matthew, yes, you can, you can get, uh, oh, there you go, Parker, thanks for helping. Yeah, uh, uh, screenshot my work is totally fine. Uh, you are welcome to screenshot it, and Parker, thank you for sharing it with people in the chat room there. You, you are our tech guru, as always. So Kayla, I would say that maybe it was because I didn't have unlimited attempts flagged and I tried to fix that. Why don't you try to upload today's lab to Blackboard and see how it goes. Um, I will, uh, is there a worm on a string? Oh, <laughs> if you guys, uh, if you have trouble, Kayla, let me know and I'll try to ask IT what's going on, okay? Or maybe Parker can tell us. Parker, do you ever troubleshoot stuff with Blackboard? That's sort of, it sucks because I only started working there and I worked for two weeks and then we had to close down. So I don't have the most experience, um, but what's the issue? Um, Kayla had trouble submitting her assignments to Blackboard and we couldn't figure out why. They just wouldn't, they wouldn't let you upload it? What happened if you clicked the box, Kayla? It's weird. The screen doesn't look like how it normally looks when I go to submit something. So when I clicked into the lab, it takes me to this screen that I have to click OK or continue to get to the actual submission page. It kind of has that, that loader box that we were talking about before, where normally I would see my work pop up, but there wasn't anything there. 
and then I had to go through that screen to the next in order so to- So let me share screen with you. One thing that I can do, Kayla, is if we go to my Blackboard page, the professors have a thing called student view where we can see supposedly what it looks like on your end. Can you see my mouse hovering over student preview? Yes. So let's click on that. So Chris, make sure you submit to the right lab this time. Maybe that's what it was. Um, from student view, you would go to lab, okay? You would clearly go to the rotation of the sun, right, Chris? Lab eight. And then once you're in here, I think this is where you want to do your submission under browse my computer files. And then you click that and it should just open some stuff up. But that's not what it looked like for you, is it, Kayla? It did eventually let me get to that screen. Um, and then when I attached the files and click submit, nothing happened when I clicked submit. Oh, that happens to me too. That just means you have to try submitting it again. But you probably couldn't submit it again because I accidentally left single attempt instead of multiple attempts. Now I've changed everything to multiple attempts, so it should be okay this time. I've tried it multiple times throughout the week. It's never let me submit. Uh, okay, well, this unfortunately is, is over my pay grade. Uh, or I want to help you, and maybe I will figure out a way to help you, but I don't know what the way is yet. And it's kind of difficult, because normally at CCRI, you have to like go and see someone in person to get them to pay attention to you. So now nobody's at their office, nobody's there. I'm trying to figure out who to contact, but it, it's kind of tough. Also, it's weird because if I say one student out of 80 is having trouble, they're gonna be like, well, all the other 79 are doing it just fine. So it sounds like it's not our problem. I'm worried that that's what they're gonna, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Something funny is happening and we gotta figure it out. So it might be good for you to contact them too if it continues to happen, okay? Because if it's happening to you, you can show them a screenshot or something. Just keep in touch. And meanwhile, if anything goes wrong on Blackboard, just email it to me so I can record it in the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, you guys are awesome. Great hangs as always. Any other questions or issues, things you need to talk about? Okay, well, I'll stop the recording.